Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs, and look what I found on eBay. These uh, strange looking uh, Russian electroluminescent displays. There was a hint on the uh, Neonixi Google mailing list about uh, that these are available uh, at eBay. I got a set of four of these um, for around, I think, $40 or euros including a postage and they are built like a tank and there is rumor that they even were used uh, in tanks you can see they are quite big and really heavy duty construction you even get the um, the socket adapters here which are screwed onto uh, the back uh, contacts here and um, well you might uh, never have seen this kind of eight segment displays. Um, they are quite different from standard seven segment or alphanumeric so-called starburst 14 or 16 segment displays. And the interesting thing about these is uh, you can display not only um, the numerals from zero to nine, but also nearly all uh, Cyrillic and um, Latin characters, um, except for one or two letters. Uh, so there's very efficient uh, use uh, made out of only uh, eight segments. You can see they look a little bit like VFD displays from the color. Um, the color here on the camera is not exactly what it looks like in reality. It's more a... Uh, uh, blue green a cyan uh, type kind of color and um, well the why is this in, in my video series about a vintage display technology not only because this is uh, vintage Russian technology but electroluminescent displays are one of the oldest technologies to display um, uh, numbers and uh, letters um, and the most famous use um, that was made of electroluminescent display is the famous AGC, the Apollo guidance computer, which uh, one was in the lunar module and one in the command module and which took us to the moon and back. And um, I will give you a link down below about um, the uh, Apollo guidance computer about the famous DISCI, the display keyboard, um, where electroluminescent displays were used for the first time uh, known to the public. And a fellow video blogger Fran Blanche is trying to recreate uh, the DISCI, especially starting with the, with the electroluminescent display of the Apollo guidance computer. I will also give you a link down below in the description uh, about her uh, video blog about the AGC electroluminescent display. Now, if you want to know about the technology, look it up in, uh, at eBay. It's fundamentally different to many other um, display technologies concerning what voltages you have to use. This one operates with an AC voltage of 200 volts, so quite high, and um, not 50 hertz, but uh, you need something, optimum is 400 hertz, um, and uh, it, it works between 400 and um, 400 hertz and 5 kilohertz, that's where the rating is. Now, for this, uh, this special display, there is a whole uh, set or series of th these Russian displays. Uh, so we'll switch over to the only technical, uh, to the only internet source I found where you uh, could get a, um, a little bit of technical information about these uh, special electroluminescent displays. Anyway, before that, um, E, uh, let's use the short term EL for electroluminescent displays. They are even today used, for example, as uh, backlighting for um, dashboards uh, in, in cars uh, or the backlight of, um, of computer displays, laptop displays. 
And um, the most often use you can find today is so-called EL wire. So you get also this display type um, not only in a in a in a planar uh, way, but also as a wire. So in and if you ask yourself, well, how do you get the uh, 200 volts here for the uh, display? Well. I didn't have a 200 volt AC source with 500 hertz, but I made it a little bit different. I took an uh, audio frequency uh, generator, which can be set either to fixed frequencies or manual to uh, variable frequency. And I connected this simply to a power amplifier. And then the final step, so the power amplifier gives you about 20 volts and then I use simply a simple transformer of a 1 to 10 um, voltage ratio and use it backwards. So I'm inputting the, the output of the uh, stereo amplifier here on the secondary side and on the primary side I get 10 times the voltage which then is um, around 200 volts AC. And as that way you can vary the frequency and get enough voltage. The current consumption is not very high. Uh, it's just a few milliamps. Um, so uh, that's how you can make your, just for testing, your own uh, 200 volts AC source uh, with, uh, with variable frequency. And on the back side, you even have to find out for yourself the uh, so where the single digits are uh, here on the socket um, pins, because uh, you even even in the Russian source that I found uh, about technical details, uh, they don't have a pinout, but it's quite simply you just try out pairs of two, and uh, that's quite easy. So the common pin is simply pin A1, and the other one I've uh, paralleled so that all segments are. Uh, lighting up um, at the same time. So that's how it looks, quite nice. Uh, I'm still thinking about, of course, how to make a clock out of this, but how do you uh, switch the single segments with 200 volts AC? Now the uh, basic idea I have is to use op opto triax for that purpose. But um, we'll see in the Russian uh, information source about the displays uh, some, uh, some ideas how you can switch the single digits here with uh, discrete components. So let's go over to the Russian uh, site and take a look at uh, what we find there. Uh, so th this is the... Uh, the website, uh, sorely in, in Russian, so I don't know if uh, Google Translate uh, can do a little bit of uh, clearing up what this really means. So here you see the whole family of the uh, electroluminescent displays. I think the big one here is uh, even one with uh, alphanumeric uh, 14 or 16 segment um, display. And uh, the one that you just saw is not this one, it's, it's I think this one. So you see the other ones are really big ones. And there are even um, uh, types where you have an even illuminated um, area. So there you could, could in, in theory, make a really big TV set with a million of these uh, uh, spanning several meters in uh, diameter. So let's look at what we have. Here we have the display that I bought, which you just saw. Some explanation about the principle of EL displays. And here we have a graph uh, about um, where we have on the x-axis the voltage, on the y-axis we have the uh, I think it's called the luminescence in candelas per square meter. And here, this one is a, here we have on the x-axis the frequency. So the uh, 
the brightness also varies with the frequency, but the lifetime uh, goes heavily down when you use um, the uh, frequencies higher than 400 hertz. Here's some uh, diagrams about the different type. I think this is the one uh, that I got here, but you don't see the... Uh, there is no uh, pinout um, designation, but as I told you, you can easily find that out for yourself. Here are the different other types, an arrow, and what else they made. And here are a few suggestions of how you can control um, the single segments here, either with a thyristor or SCR as some call it, and here with a transistor and a triac, and that brought me to the idea just to use an optotriac, because then uh, you, uh, you have a kind of standard TTL input and you don't have to care anything more and about what's on, on the high voltage side and you just can control it with a TTL level. Or here a, with a little uh, transformer switched by a, uh, by a square wave through a single NPN uh, transistor. But therefore you would need uh, for the eight segments eight different little transformers, so that's not very feasible. Um, so, and here you have the different types. I think there are still some links. Let's click on one of them. Okay, you still... Ah, I didn't see this before. Here you get additional information about the single types that are available. Let's look up. Yeah, this is a standard, standard seven segment display and here are other types. This is the one I think I got. Here is the al alphanumeric type. So quite nice and uh, many of them are available at eBay for reasonable prices. Pr probably the price is much lower than for Nixie tubes uh, simply because it's so difficult to make a clock out of them uh, due to the uh, difficult control electronics that you need. Let's just do another one, just clicking it by chance. Uh -huh, okay, just a photo. What else have we got? Okay, just a few photos, but no more technical info. Let's look what this one is. Oh, this is also quite big. Yeah, so that was it for some uh, very strange um, display type from the Cold War times. And uh, as I told you, there are rumors they are not only built like a tank, but they were used in Russian tanks as display. And that's probably the reason why I, they are so ruggedly built uh, in, in really heavy duty uh, construction, even with cast aluminium, as it looks like here for the, for the lower uh, case. So uh, if I really have find the time to make a clock out of it, I will make a short video about the uh, clock when it's ready. I still have to uh, find out how, which with which segments you really can display the different uh, numerals. So anyway, that was it. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.